My dear Francesca, I pray that this letter finds you in good health and safety. Today marks a year that I have been away from you and our children. I miss you terribly, and I long to be home again. I thank God that I am still alive, and I thank God that you are still there for me to return to. I cannot wait to return home. I have been at my post at this catapult for a year now. Is the year really now 1097? This means Marco must be turning 10 in May, and Bessina will be 6 years old in August. Before we know it, our little angels will be married and caring for their own children. Oh, how I hope that they never have to experience the never-ending fight I find myself in currently. I know that I am fighting for the good of the church, and I go to be part of this. But all the same, I would throw myself from a catapult to save Marco from going to war if I had to. And Bethina should never be left at home without her husband the way I have left you. I implore you to stay strong for their sake. I am praying for you, and I hope to return to you soon. With all my love, Alessandro. I heard the coins clink as they fell into the boy's hand, and in an instant he was gone, leaving me only with the lingering smell of his horse. I trusted that he would bring the letter to my wife and come back alive, as he always did, but with the war growing worse, I cannot deny that I feared for him. Cautiously, I made my way back to the massive catapult I'd been in charge of for over a year now. As the sun went down, the cool January air started to turn colder by the hour. Shivering and lying next to the massive weapon, I said my prayers, thanked my lord for the day, checked to make sure that Paolo had taken over the night watch, and went to sleep. Early in the morning, I was awoken by the sounds of men screaming and shouting. Instantly becoming alert, I jumped to my feet and took my post behind the catapult. I grabbed one of the boys nearby and asked him what was going on. He told me that we had been attacked, but we still had a much larger and stronger army than our opponent. I thanked him and sent him on his way, returning to my post. Suddenly, I heard the voice of the general bellowing out above the chaos. Alessandro! 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 Release the catapult! Do it now! Obediently, I said a quick prayer and I began loading the stones onto the catapult. I saw the anxiety in the general's eyes and I knew I needed to go faster. I called the boy I had spoken with earlier. Obediently, he rushed over and began to help me. As we worked, I could see that he was very nervous. To try to calm him down, I asked him some questions. By the time we finished, I had learned that his name was Luca, he was 15 years old, and he lived in a village not far from my own with his mother and his father, who was a blacksmith. Seeing that he had calmed down a little bit, I gave him the signal to start pulling the catapult into a ready position. As I usually did, I said a quick prayer before I began pulling. When the catapult was ready, I looked at Luca and told him that if we survived the war, he must come and meet my family, especially my daughter. He agreed, and we stood there for a moment of silence. I looked at the general, and he gave me the signal. Luca and I nodded, and in a few seconds, the catapult had been released. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see Luca wincing at the sounds of the blood-curdling screams coming from the enemy. Reassuringly, I put my hand on his shoulder and led him back to where the rest of our army was waiting. Together, we silently awaited the return of the general. A few minutes later, the general appeared, looking triumphant. We all cheered, but returned quickly to our posts, not knowing when the next attack might come. Luca, who now saw me as a father figure, came to the catapult with me. Months passed, and we continued to win our battles. Luca never left my side, and his skills with the catapult kept improving. Finally, after two more years, the crusade was over, and we were allowed to return to our home. Upon returning to Italy, Luca and I went first to his village to meet his parents. Of course, I invited them to my home to meet my family. That night, after Luca had gone to bed, I spoke with his parents about marrying him to my daughter. After much deliberation, we agreed that they would be married a week after we arrived in my village. The wedding ceremonies went off without a hitch, and everybody was content. Soon after, though, Luca and I were called again to join the crusade. 
As we had in the last crusade, Luca and I continued to work together at the catapult, and we came out victorious almost every time. We kept up our winning battles for three years, until one day when our camp was attacked out of nowhere in the middle of the night, and I was stabbed in the arm. After this incident, the general could tell that I needed more help than just Luca. Knowing that I would need the assistance as soon as possible, he sent out for another soldier immediately. As my injury got worse, Luca and I waited anxiously for the new soldier to arrive. We waited for two months, and eventually we started to wonder if he was coming at all. One day, we heard the sound of men screaming, and we knew we would be called to duty soon, with or without the new soldier. We waited for an hour, but the general never came to give the signal. By listening to the shouts of the other soldiers, we learned that he had been captured. Panicked, we huddled closer together to hide behind the catapult. Suddenly, I saw a young man tentatively walking up to the catapult. The boy knelt down beside us and asked if we were the crew manning the catapult. Luca, who was too scared to speak, nodded. The boy told us that he was the soldier who had been sent to help us, so we had him quickly settle behind the catapult with us. Like I had long ago with Luca, I asked the boy some questions about his life to try to get to know him. Who are you and what brings you to this horrible battlefield, I asked. My name is Marco, and I have come to follow in the footsteps of my father, Alessandro Verona. Shock hit me like a tidal wave. I could not believe that my own son had walked into this field of death, and I had not even recognized him. I opened my mouth to respond, but I was stopped by a blood-curdling scream from Luca. I heard a man grunt, and tears began to pour down Luca's face. Marco still did not seem to realize who I was. Before I knew it, I could feel the cool metal of an enemy sword running through my back, and I knew I was finished. With my dying breath, I whispered, Marco, Luca, my sons, look out for each other, and keep Christina and your mother safe. God bless you. The tears on Marco's face were the last thing I saw.